there's a lot you can learn from out of the past. Good day, I'm Lenny Tweeden, the director of the Martin County Historical Society. Welcome to Martin County Out of the Past. Uh, today, co-hosting with me is curator Jim Marushin. And uh, Jim, let's talk a little bit about what's been happening at the museum. Oh gosh, we've had a lot going on lately. It's been a busy few weeks. We had about 80 to 85 second graders from Blue Earth Inn recently. And they were a very lively group, and oh, they yeah. were very interested in engaging in uh, the stuff that we have to see. Absolutely, a lot of good energy that day. We also went to the conference in Austin for the uh, group of local museums for Minnesota. Yeah, it was a really good conference. I, I was there one day, you were there too, I think, yep. and I, I learned a lot and brought yeah. back some information for the board. Oh yeah, and good to talk to people from other museums, learn right. what they're doing too. Um, then we also had our annual card party, a lot of fun uh, with people playing Mahjong, 500, Bridge. They really enjoyed that. Yeah. Enjoyed did, that. did we get pictures of that, Lenny? Well, I've got pictures of the start when they were eating. Sure. Well, but some of us forgot to take pictures of them actually playing cards. <laughs> well, you know, the, the cake might be the best part of it. Yeah, I think so. so, too. And that's why we forgot, because we were eating cake, too. And I also understand recently you sat down with a, a couple of interesting people. You want to tell us about that? Yeah. Uh, I sat down with Greg and Bruce Donnelly, <laughs> and we talked about the Triangle Drive-In. The Triangle was a restaurant that was in... Uh, Fairmont mm. back in the 60s. I think it was it's a very unique restaurant. It had a triangle shape and it's still in existence uh, out east of the Walmart store. Oh, sure. Also, it was named a triangle because of that triangular piece of land that it sat on. Mm. Okay. Right across from the Graffiti Corner is where, it's, where it was located. Sure. So, Well, that sounds pretty interesting. Should we take a look? I think that would be great. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm excited today to have two uh, visitors to the museum, uh, Greg Donnelly and Bruce Donnelly. We're going to visit with them about a uh, restaurant that's kind of a historic restaurant. Uh, it's called The Triangle. And what do you guys know about The Triangle? First of all, why was it called The Triangle? It was called The Triangle because uh, 1965 it, it was opened as a, a triangle drive-in. It was on a triangle piece of land. Oh, okay. And built, of course, in the shape of a triangle. So. Okay. And it opened in what, 1965, you said? June 25th, uh, 1965 is when we had our opening of the doors. Okay, who built it? Was it your dad that built it? Well, he bought the he bought the land. He bought the land and built the... Built the structure. The contract uh -huh. came in and, and it was a triangular piece too. Uh-huh. So it was a triangle piece of land, but it's also the okay. triangle. Kind of a double duty triangle. Yes. Well, <laughs> so we emphasize the triangle. Okay. So, uh, what... What did the triangle do, or what did you? It was a restaurant, correct? Right. Uh -huh. And was it fast food, or? It was uh, fast food at the time. Uh -huh. uh, it was not a didn't have a drive-through window or uh, or car cops or anything like that. People okay. came in, ordered, and took their food out with them. And uh, sure. And, well, speaking of food, what kind of food do they have? Hamburgers, and hot dogs, hot dogs for a while. I don't know if we kept uh -huh. that on forever. We had steak sandwiches oh. at the very beginning. Fish wedges and uh, French fries and onions yeah. and shakes and popcorns. Hamburgers were charred broiled. Okay. Uh, what was the most popular item, do you recall? Well, I'm sure the double burger. Double burger. Yeah. the works type thing was. Yeah. It was a chain. You put the hamburger on and it'd be, you know, from above and below and, and uh, fire and. It went down one line and the bun went on the other one and they <laughs> kind of met down. They didn't always meet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some stories about that. But, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the prices of the food at that time? Because well, I know it's interesting to look back and yeah, see compared to today. The hamburgers were 20 cents. 20 cents. Uh, <laughs> when we had a grand opening, they went to 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was the, st was the steak? Sandwich was that sixty cents? Six, I think it was sixty, but it didn't last too long. Uh -huh. know, people didn't really order that yeah, much. They weren't expecting to get a steak at this uh, <laughs> drive and drive it. Um, but it was fun to work there. I, mean, I started when I was thirteen. Bruce was sixteen, and Steve sure. was seventeen. So they ran the shifts. Um, so you guys were the the sons of the owner then, right? Lou. Yeah, who built that? Right. So and he talked about that being a college. College fun too. I mean, you guys <laughs> yeah. you didn't start at that late, but for you guys, it was but. all uh, all the employees were boys, fifteen okay. to eighteen years. We didn't hire any girls because 
guys would show off or something like that, <laughs> or, you know, whatever, you know. So How many uh, employees did they have? Uh, well, we had a, generally. We had a reunion back in 19, 2015. Mm-hmm. And I, I, we counted about 46. 46? Yeah, that okay. included our brothers, too, all together. So. You know, your dad was in the restaurant business, and he brought acts to, other acts to town, didn't he? Occasionally he did. Um, Bruce probably remembers it better than I do, but uh, the Sirline House, he had the ink spots come. They were big back in the 30s and 40s. Yeah. And, and um, we have a picture of him with the ink spots mm-hmm. uh, back in 67. I remember Lou and Marge made us come out there to listen to him, and it, it wasn't the Beatles or the, you know, <laughs> for us. Some of you guys are going to listen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you later about the ink spots, but yeah. that was when we first heard about them. Okay, well, interesting. Uh, back to the triangle. Okay, being a new operation, uh, the triangle, you probably had some growing pains as you started out. The first sure year. did. <laughs> what, what are some of the interesting or unique experiences that you can remember? I remember the one in Bruce about the, uh, the forgetting to put the meat in the bu- between the buns. Oh, yeah. We had uh, family from uh, Welcome. They came over to do some fishing on our lakes here and ordered, uh, gosh, over 25 hamburgers. Something like that, yeah. 15 to 25, somewhere in that range. And uh, they got they got the food out on the middle of the lake, and there was no no meat in the buns. <laughs> <laughs> that was the hamburgerless buns? Yeah. Or hamburgerless hamburgers? Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. they have to pay extra it, for that? Or that was <laughs> our uh, high profit. <laughs> Yeah, that was, we got teased about that for a long time. I remember that one. <laughs> Any other uh, interesting experiences? Bruce, remember the shake machine? Well, when the, uh, we left the uh, liquid uh, soap in the shake machine uh, <laughs> instead of draining and washing and cleaning and et cetera, there was still some soap in it when we left that night. And when we filled it up with uh, shake, uh, you know, cream or whatever. A mixture of shake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> First one came back right away. <laughs> and I think you were working that that uh, that shift when it, whoever it was, it was came in yeah. order a vanilla shake yeah. and then they went out and started eating. And we started it. saying with or without. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no extra charge for the soap in or anything. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, well, how long did uh, did you guys work there? How long was it in operation? Well, we owned it from 1965 till 69, late 69, and we sold it to uh, Bill Miller? No. Marvin? No, not Marvin. Uh, William? Art? Art, Art Miller. Miller. There we go. There we go. Yeah. That's the last name. Um, so we had it for five years as the Donleys. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. So Bruce and Steve were the managers at age 16 and 17. Oh. And I was 13, so I was always an apprentice. You were the goal for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I left in '67. Uh-huh. So Went to the Navy. They had a choice of working the Triangle for the summer or join the Navy. So I, I picked the Navy. <laughs> Very patriotic of you, Bruce. <laughs> so, so then I came on. I was 16, uh-huh. and so Steve and I ran it then, and we did all the, you know, we paid, we wrote the paychecks out, sure, and um, banked the money and ordered and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. scheduling together. So we did all <clears throat> that type of thing, and. Um, Lou would come out occasionally, mm-hmm. and uh, Marge would come out a little more often because she came out for the food to feed it. Lou was your dad, and Marge was your mother. Yeah, I right should have said that. Yeah, and um, <laughs> one time Lou came out, and and we had finished the lunch hour. Uh-huh. Or the, anyway, it was busy, and then we all kind of relaxed. And Gary relaxed. Gary Highland Gary relaxed Highland. the most. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was uh, Gary. And uh, he, he gave me permission to say this, so I'm okay. not gossiping about Good. it. But uh, anyway, <laughs> Gary uh, turned the music music up real loud, and then he uh, took his hat off and he put his remember that desk we used to have out there. Uh-huh. So he sat in the chair and had his feet on the desk and was really relaxed and eating a hamburger. And then, <laughs> unknown to him, Lou had driven in the back of that back door entrance. Remember that? And then he comes in the door. Gary's got his back to the door, so he didn't know he couldn't hear it because the music was so loud. And so then my dad came over and put on put his hand on his shoulder and said, "Gary, can I make you more comfortable?" <laughs> <laughs> and Gary just jerked, you know, oh, I'm Mr. Donnelly, and we all laughed. I was working that shift. I remember that shift. It was funny to see that. Yeah. So, well, when uh, when it finally closed, 
uh, as far as being a restaurant. What happened to the building then, or what took place with it? Well, the, uh, it became a orthodontics office for a while. Okay. For, the the guy's name was Beckman, as I remember. Ed Beckman. Ed, Ed Beckman, Beckman, yeah. I remember and, that, too. Uh, Pat Beamer, I believe, lived there for a while in the was upstairs it? apartment. There was an apartment yeah. up there. Okay. Yeah. They rearranged it before because it was just always an open mm -hmm. sweat box in the summertime. We didn't have any air conditioning. Yeah. And uh, so they rearranged it. And I'm not sure uh, who bought it. And now they moved it to uh, about two miles east of Fairmont. Kind of north northeast of where the dump used to be. Mm -hmm. Remember that uh, hike? Yep. Yeah. It's on the north side of, of uh, Interstate 90. I was, I'm not sure who owns it, but they... Well, Steve, po the Potter's bought it, wasn't it? Uh, oh, I think it could be. I'm not, I just don't know for sure. But Stella Stady's daughter is a Potter who moved to Blue Earth, and her son, Steve, is who we... Talk, who, I remember talking with him to get it so that we can go out there and the when we had the reunion back oh, in sure. 2015. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were going to turn it into a uh, bed kind and breakfast, or not that, but a, maybe a DRBO thing. Mm -hmm. And they were thinking about having like an art, um, you know, something for the arts oh. and have people come out there because they had a lot of space to park cars and all that kind of stuff. Sure. And yeah. I don't know what, what ever happened on that. But. Well, I know in the reunion when we were out there, it, it looks just like it used to. Yeah, it was really I mean, fun it's in to good, go through. Very good it. condition. It was fun to go through there. Yeah, yeah it was really nice of Potters that let us go drive back there and, sure. and uh, go in there. And we had a group um, for the reunion, about 21 former employees, but there were a lot of wives there. And it was just yeah. a great time. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was, was here in the museum, too, where you started off. Yeah, you started yeah. off here. Yeah, for sure. It was fun to... Had Picture of everybody, and I remember yeah. one guy coming in and saying, "Now, is this the Triangle Drive-In reunion? We all had our hats on and stuff." Both times. Well, what's just funny to... where the Triangle was located? Let's see, what's there now? It's across from Graffiti Corner. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think there's maybe three businesses in that. Yeah, Bolton and Mink. Bolton and Mink, mm -hmm. and uh, Terry Mackeson has his uh, business in there, and then uh, insurance company. There's an insurance. Yeah. People in there too. So. Have you been in there since? I have. I, I've never been. I, I've driven by it, but I've never been there. Yeah. It's a nice looking building. Yeah. yeah, well, that was that was quite a restaurant at the time. I mean, it, it was very interesting and very unique the way it was put together. Yeah. Well, I, any uh, any closing comments or anything we missed that would be of interest? Uh, I just want to thank, you know, back when we had the reunion, you remember all the the really good young guys that worked there, and they were just fabulous people. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, and we were just thankful, of, you know, of our parents doing that, building yeah. that, and, and uh, being able to work there. And yeah. but it was really fun to, you know, you'd have your friends come and work there, and sure, and, uh, it was just a great time. Sure, yeah, it was good. Well, thank you, Greg, Bruce. Appreciate it very Thanks, much. Uh, yeah, it's been great. Very, very interesting, and it's a it's a piece of local history that we want to not forget. And well, you keep up your great work. You oh, thank you. Great books. This is really a fun book to read. I just couldn't believe all this yeah. different information that's in this book. Some great yeah. stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Keep Thanks doing it. You bet. Keep working at it. Well, Lenny, that was an interesting interview. Yeah, really interesting, and they, they provide a lot of uh, really good historic facts about that uh, restaurant yeah, yeah yeah they had some great, great stories for yeah. sure um another interesting thing that we shot recently we took a look at some of our artifacts we got in yeah should we take a look at those yeah absolutely hello i'm lenny this is jim we're in the research library we're taking a look at this book about the mozart marching society yeah. they were quite a group that performed uh, have you ever heard of them before jim i uh, just have heard the name i don't know much about them they were a pretty popular group in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, they performed in a lot of different areas, a lot of different communities, not only just Fairmont, but around Martin County and Iowa, northern Iowa as well. Sure. So what else do we have here in the research library that's of interest? Well, we've got a lot of things. Um, one, well, not one, but multiple things here. This is a, a recent set of things we've got in, and these are soaps and different laundry detergents and what I think that is neat about them, Lenny, is the advertising. I mean, you can see the different uh, the fonts. I mean, some of these brands are still around. Uh, Draft uh, is still around. 20 Mule Team, Borax, uh, Palm Olive. These brands that are still around. 
Um, and this one here is an interesting one. It's Sweetheart Toilet Soap. And they ran uh, a reward program where you could get silverware. But during the Second World War, Uncle Sam needed all the uh, medals it could get. So it says, sorry, sweetheart friends, but Uncle Sam has to come first. So <laughs> you can see these are two very similar boxes, uh, but they change uh, the giveaway part of the program. So, so between you and Uncle Sam, looks like they really cleaned up. Huh? Yes, they, absolutely. So, yeah, I just don't think, uh, think these are just neat to look at. They kind of represent... Uh, an era multiple decades ago now, so... And some are still in existence, aren't they? Like Drift? Yes, Drift is, uh, as the father of a four-year-old, I've been using Drift a lot okay. the last several years. Um, I know Palm Olive, of course, is still around. Ivory. Ivory, yep. So, and you can see, of course, the brands don't look like this nowadays, right. but, uh, yeah, it just shows how packaging has changed. Um, you can imagine walking through uh, Gunther's or Wallace's or some of these old stores and seeing the shelves lined with these uh, unique boxes. All right, now Lenny, you brought some interesting things to show the people today. You I got did. over here. I did, yes. These bottles are kind of unique today. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, the printing and the way they're, uh, I don't know if the word is embossed, but the way they're printed on those those bottles there, mm -hmm. they were uh, delivered to the homes and it oh, was sure. milk. Now, of course, today you go to the grocery store and you buy it in the carton. You know, I don't think there's any glass bottles. Another interesting one, is this Crystal Bottling Company bottle. Mm -hmm. Crystal Bottling was a company in Fairmont that was in the vicinity across from Profinium. Oh. And they bottled pop, um, strawberry, uh, orange, many different kinds of pop. Sure. So very, very interesting. And again, the the uh, uh, stenciling or the printing on the bottle is, is really quite interesting. Yeah. What else you got over there? Well... We've all been to school and we've all had lunches, <laughs> but I doubt that anyone recently has used a lunch pail like this. <laughs> uh, its I don't think it would be keeping things warm or cool because there's no insulation to it. Sure. Uh, it is unique in that it has a, really a, a lot of interesting stenciling or painting along the sides. Yeah. Uh, it isn't very large. Probably get a small sandwich in there. Get a <laughs> bottle of milk or anything, but it sure. is something that can be closed up and carried like that. Oh yeah, kind of a unique piece. Yeah. And the last piece I'd like to show is a toaster. You ever seen one like this, Jim? Gosh, I definitely have not. <laughs> you know how it works? Have any idea? Uh, no. Okay, if you're going to make toast, you put the toast, you put the bread in like oh, that. Interesting. Close it up, and there's no signal or anything. You just wait a little bit, and when you think it's ready on one side, you open it up, and you flip the bread over to toast the other side. Oh, so you don't really get that cathartic popping of the toast on uh, these ones. No, no, no. <laughs> You've got to be kind of on the ball and watch it very carefully. Sure. So this is really a, a, a unique item from the 1920s. Hmm. Hey, Jim, you brought a couple of things, too. What, what do you have over there? Yeah. Why don't you get up and show us? Well... I know I've previously modeled some hats on this program, but, you know, hat culture in Martin County existed outside of Annabelle. This here would be maybe your Sunday best, so to speak. This nice uh, lemon-colored, uh, you know, hat maybe you'd wear to church or out to a nice meal. Now, is that one of Annabelle's? No, this one comes from our welcome room upstairs. Okay. Yep, so this All is... Right. Uh, Probably about 50s or 60s. And what about the other ones you have over there? Yeah, we've got a couple others here to show you. This uh, this nice sort of spring bonnet-looking hat is actually a wedding hat. Hmm. If you can believe it, this is from the 1880s. Um, it was worn by, let's see, a Mrs. Pennington to with her wedding dress. So... I don't know that hats are very much in vogue for weddings nowadays, but in the 1880s, would have been uh, all the rage. Oh, well, it would certainly be a good sunblocking hat. <laughs> yeah. And what's that unique, exotic example you have there? Oh. Where'd that one come from? Well, this one comes from the Roaring Twenties. This is 
uh, an example of what you would call a flapper hat. Uh, you can see these are very uh, beautiful feathers. Well, they don't look quite so great anymore, but I'm sure in its heyday, this would have looked uh, quite stunning. Um, again, 1920s era and very fragile. Um, I'm not going to handle this one because the feathers will probably fall off. But to me, like it's for the birds. Yeah, absolutely for but the birds. But interesting. Yeah, so all sorts of fashion uh, represented throughout the years here. So very good. Yeah. I uh, got a vacuum over there, Jim. You want to get up and get that? Sure. Um, is that the one I asked you to use in the in the pro room? Well, I think you asked me to use it, but isn't that what we have an intern for now? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think that's a little. Uh, we'll have to train him in on that. Yeah, there we go. So this is uh, boy. How long ago was that used? I wonder. Uh, I think 1900s. Early 1900s. The pre-electricity days. Yeah. And it must be some sort of a pumping action that. Yeah. Hand powered. Let's see it, uh, yeah, a little suction action down there. You've got a canister to empty, so yeah. it's probably full of dust. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to open it on camera. <laughs> so, unique. Yeah. That's an interesting item. Okay. All right, now, Lenny, take a look. Yeah, what? Wow. What is that called? <laughs> well, these are the components of what is called a stereographic library. And this is from uh, the First World War. Now, what is interesting, you can sort of uh, tell the date of these because it just says World War, not World War I. They hadn't had the second one yet. So pretty sure this is from about the, yeah, the 30s, 30s era. era. And uh, so what this is made up is these cards. And this is uh, the trenches along the Austrian-Italian front in 1916. Hmm. So you would take these double images... Put them in the stereograph, and if you, as you saw, you take a look there, and it creates a 3D image or a the illusion. Image. Yep, an illusion of a single 3D image. So you can kind of see how those work, and this is how you would see uh, pictures from all over the world. I've got a couple of interesting ones I found here. Yeah, this one is a dirigible, and you know it would be like a big floating balloon. Sure. <laughs> uh, What's interesting about this is the next one I grabbed shows French troops inspecting a wrecked Zeppelin. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so maybe it got off the ground, but uh, didn't exactly land the way they planned. Sure. So. Maybe it wasn't that safe. <laughs> yeah. So there's apparently some really interesting oh, ones to look at. There are, others. there are a ton. Now, here you can see this is no man's land. You imagine looking across the field and all that razor wire and barbed wow. wire. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm glad I'm living in 2023. This is an interesting one. It's the uh, remains of a Red Cross train. Huh. So, yeah, it's sort of... Uh, Was it bombed out then? Or yeah, you... I think it... Friendly fire or errant fire or something. I'd, I would hope you wouldn't shoot a Red Cross train. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, so these, you know, now we can go Google things or if you grew up in the 90s, maybe Encarta, kick up your Encarta CD. But this is how you would see those images from across the world for these big events before the advent of uh, newer technology. So, that was probably really the thing to do at that time. Yeah, yep, absolutely. We also have another interesting item. I'm going to go grab that okay. if you don't mind. Do that. This oh, that one is, is uh, Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fragile, so you got to be real careful with it. This would have been an advertising counter piece for Gookin's photo studio. And you can see here it does have a cord so mm -hmm. it did run and you can see boy imagine seeing this when it was first made these cars going around you can see they got just married on there of course gookin uh, studios hoping you would uh, contract them for your wedding photography looking at these cars it looks like it was probably from the 50s yeah i think that's about right yeah you know where the studio is located I, I'm not sure offhand. Do you know? Yes. It was located uh, on the corner up from uh, the Sentinel. 
Oh, the sure. Right at the side of the street to the north. Okay. I believe there's a dance studio in there now. Oh, sure. Downtown Fairmont. Then. Yeah. Yep. So okay. I think that's where it was was located. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, this is a really uh, aesthetic piece, a really visual piece. Would have loved to have seen it in its prime. I think this would have been just uh, amazing to walk in and see that. Yeah, Blaine Gukin was the uh, photographer. and Sure. He was very well known in the area back in the day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Mm, interesting, yeah. Well, Jim, we've come across quite a few unique little items. Um, do you think there's some more in the museum? Oh, Are gosh. Yeah, this would just scratch the surface. I mean, you're talking... Kind of the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, absolutely. A very small percentage of... Uh, what we've got here to sure. look at. And I know just myself, just walking around, I see things that, gee, I didn't see that before. Oh, And yeah. I've been here almost 20 years, and you've been here how long? About 15 years, yeah. So, yeah, there's just so many things that uh, are of interest that people will find uh, unique and of interest and to be able to learn about Martin County's history. Absolutely. So please, stop on down and see this and a lot more. Yeah, those are really interesting things that we, we took a look at. Absolutely. you know, And we're always getting interesting artifacts and donations. Len, you want to tell uh, the people at home a little, bit, a little bit about that process? Yes. Uh, if you have something that you think would be of historic value for us here at the Martin County Historical Society, uh, you can call us or stop by and let us know. Uh, we uh, do accept donations of artifacts that are uh, pertaining to Martin County, as long as we don't have duplicates. And the final decision is made by the board, and we meet monthly with the board, and then they make the final decision on what you know what might be accepted or not. Sure, yeah. Well, and you know, and I brought some of those uh, recent things we got in, too, with us today. Yeah, let's we, take a look at those. Yeah, this is a water carnival button from Interlochen Park for their seventh annual celebration. It's a really interesting one. I don't think we've seen one like this before. No, that, that's a really historic item, too. Yeah, that's great. Also, brought with us this shovel. You can kind of see it's uh, kind of compact for travel. Where did that come from? Uh, this came from the Martin County Veterans Memorial, and it was the shovel that they used in their groundbreaking ceremony. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jim, I think we're out of time. I think we are. But you can still come on down and see all the great things we have. We invite everybody to come in and check out our interesting collection. And remember, you can learn a lot from out of the past.